live here in the shadows of the National Cathedral in Northwest Washington, D.C. Welcome to this installment of the Metro Lax series live streamed at allmetsports.com. Today's matchup features the Landon Bears squaring off against the St. Albans Bulldogs. Hello everybody, I'm Monica Moore alongside Cab Maddox. Leah Reich will join us in just a little bit, but Cab, this is an important IEC matchup for both of these two teams. Landon having a great year so far. St. Albans looking for their first IEC win of the year. Yeah, Landon's on a hot streak right now. They've won five in a row. They figured it out. They're healthy and they're clicking. Uh, before the Georgetown prep game three weeks ago, I wouldn't, be, wouldn't have said the same thing, but they, they, they gelled in the prep game and they beat St. Stephen's since then. They're playing as best that they played all season. season. Uh, St. Albans is looking for the first IEC win, but they have some quality wins this year over DeMatha, uh, Potomac School, Flint Hill. So uh, you know, they can compete with anybody in the area on any given day. And of course, let's go ahead and talk a little bit about our keys to the game tab that you have for both of these two teams, starting with the visitors landed. Well, for Landon, I have, they need to continue to build confidence. They, they have uh, a few more games before the IEC playoffs. They need to get better and better each, each game uh, and play the way they've played the last five games. They want to they push tempo and play fast. Uh, use their depth to their advantage today. And, and, and for St. Albans, they need, to be, uh, they need to shut down Landon's first midfield line. How they do that, uh, and talking to Coach Lester, you may see multiple long sticks up on the first midfield line today. You may see some zones, but uh, they need to shut down Landon's first midfield line if they want to win. They need to be deliberate and patient on offense, and they have the skill and the ability to do that uh, and finish the shots when they have the, the opportunities against a very good Landon defense. These two teams coached by very well-known coaches in the D.C. metro area. Of course, Landon coached by Rob Bordley and St. Albans, as you said, coached by Malcolm Lester. As we get ready for our opening face-off of the day, Sam Lamson will be squaring off for Landon, the Fairfield commit. Yeah, and James McJunkin, you'll see he'll face off with the long pole a lot. He's the number one face off guy, sophomore uh, long pole. He's been doing the best all, all season for him. And Landon coming up with the first face off of the day. Philip Pena forcing the, or pushing the ball down the field, and Landon will set up their offense. Yeah. To start things off. Yeah, number seven, Phil Pena is uh, healthy. He's one of the guys out for the first month or so of the season. Was on the wing there and started off with a nice ground ball. Landon working the ball around, getting everyone involved in the early goings of this first quarter. Looks like St. Albans is going to press out on with their short sticks uh, and deny the short, the short sticks the ball. First shot of the day by number 20, Rob Dunnigan. Saved by Alex, Alex Bikas, the goalkeeper yeah, for Alex, St. Albans. Alex has established himself now as the starter. They were rotating goalies back and forth, and we, we may see uh, Browning Altizer again, but uh, Alex has 100 saves going into today's, today's game to lead those two goalies. And now first offensive possession of the day for St. Albans, looking to get something going and to test the goalkeeper for Landon. Alex Joyce back in the goal. Had such an impressive game against Georgetown Prep earlier this year, Cab. We were very impressed with him. Yeah, and talking to uh, the Landon coach, Penn Leachman, before the game, he, he, he definitely admitted when, when he's on, Landon plays their best. He was, he was on fire against Haverford, Georgetown Prep, and St. Stephen's, and not surprisingly, those are their best three signature wins of the season thus far. St. Albans has come out with the first midfield line of Kevin Doherty there with the ball, who's a uh, Division I commit to Lehigh, uh, with Michael Sneezik and uh, Hank Balaban, which is a formidable first midfield unit. And the St. Albans team does have a lot of capable goal scorers being led right now by Cormac Dugan as their leading goal scorer, but lots of different guys can get things going for this Bulldogs team. St. Albans being very patient. Yeah, you'll see they have three attack, three sophomores starting on attack. It's been like that way all year with Bo Bai, the big left-hander uh, playing inside right now in this formation with Cormac Dugan, um, who plays the left back side, but he's actually a, a righty. He's just got such good skills, you can't tell a difference. And then uh, Bobby Beers. They're playing with two behind, one on the crease, and three middies out wide, and they've been using this formation well all season. And for all of your high school sports stories, game coverage, videos, photo galleries, and recruiting news, visit allmetsports.com, a product of the Washington Post.
every school, every sport, all the time. A little bit of a, just a drop pass and a turnover there. Something St. Albans didn't want right after a keep it in delay call. So they got the first offensive possession was long, but zero shots. Hank Brown pushing the ball down the field, helping get this Landon team set up. And this is Peter Laco. Peter, Lake, Peter Laco is headed to uh, University of Pennsylvania to play lacrosse. He's, he plays attack and midfield. Actually, I think he plays midfield a little bit better. Uh, we're curious to see where he plays in, at the next level. But he's been playing attack the whole season here. and He's a quarterback of their attack for Landon. Of course, lots of these Landon players going on to play at the next level. Very talented Landon team that has really caught a lot of people's attention. As you said, Cab, talking about your keys, they've really been on a roll as of late. They started out the season a little slow, but have found what has been working and have not looked back. Some signature wins and looking for another one today here in the IAC. Polichio here, Matt Polichio is, is a lefty attackman. He's got a, a short stick matched up on him. So they've gone to, they, he's in for his man and they've called ISO. Was looking for Taylor Valencia inside. Landon will hang on to possession, trying to work around this St. Albans defense. So far, St. Albans doing a nice job forcing Landon outside. Not allowing many good looks in there. St. Albans has come Almost out straight man-to-man, -man, uh, playing, playing Landon straight up, so to speak, uh, from the opening whistle, and that had two nice defensive possessions. And it will be St. Albans' ball off the errant pass by Landon. So a bit of a sloppy start for both of these two teams. Turnover by St. Albans on their last possession, and now Landon will return the favor. Yep, St. Albans has got the first minis right back out there. Actually, they've got Matt Sneezik, the young, uh, the young Sneezik, out there now on the, on the midfield with uh, Kevin. Look, they're going to run four offensive midfielders. Offensive middies are the ones who uh, focus and primarily play on the offensive side. Uh, they, they, they can play defense, but they, they, they all, St. Albans likes to run short stick defensive specialists along with offensive specialists to utilize uh, more players. Nice interception by Mark Strabo. And with six minutes, 43 seconds remaining in this first quarter, we are scoreless. Only one shot on goal so far in this contest by Rob Donegan for Landon. Landon's come out with, with Taylor Valencia, uh, Matt Potaliccio, and Peter Leko start on attack. They're going to balance. The, they're going to run first and second middies probably back to back to back all game. Right now they got Hank Brown out there with Donegan. This has been their first line, which has been extremely potent. Monica, we saw this line really dominate against Prep and do extremely well against St. Stephen's as well. Absolutely, particularly in that fourth quarter, yeah. Landon really came alive against Georgetown Prep. That was a huge victory for the Bears. And again, you can watch that one, the replay of that game. Go to allnetsports.com where you can see the replays of all of the games live streamed in the Metro Lack series this year. All right, now what uh, St. Albans did on defense that time was put a short stick on number two, Taylor Valencia, an attackman, and put up double long sticks on the best midfielders. That's a smart play against that midfield line for, for Landon. You, you want to put your best defenders on their best middies. Battle for the loose ball. Landon coming up with it, trying to take advantage is Hank Brown. A senior standout ball knocked loose. That was a nice takeaway by Camyar Mattini, the defenseman committed to Yale. Camyar uh, fortunately plays for, for Madlax. He's one of the better defenders in the area in the junior class. And speaking of Madlax, since 1997, Madlax is lacrosse for D.C., Maryland, and Virginia families. Check out madlax.com to learn about summer tryouts for Madlax Capital All-Stars and for summer lacrosse camps for boys and girls ages 7 through 18. Receive a 15% discount in our retail superstore in McLean, Virginia when you mention Metrolax series or use the madlax.com discount code Metrolax for all your lacrosse needs like the nationally popular Mad Gear shorts. And as we always say at Madlax, play with passion. Back to the first midfield line out there, and you can see they're going to spin it around, get it around the horn at least once before they start initiating. 
Michael Sneezek trying to make something happen. Coach Lester said Michael Sneezek is, is a do-it-all type of midi. He plays man up, man down. He's one of the better athletes in the school. He plays soccer, he plays basketball, and he leads the team in feeding, which is my favorite stat on him. Um, I always had respect for guys who had excellent vision, and he's got 14 assists on the season. That shot by Kevin Doherty, the Lehigh commit. That's their first shot, good save. Nice save by Alex Joyce. And you bring up a good point, Cav. We are, it's three minutes, 55 seconds remaining in this first quarter. That's the first shot on goal for St. Albans. This, is the, this, this tempo is exactly the way St. Albans would love it to go. Low scoring, deliberate, both six on six battle, no transition play. Um, they just don't have quite the depth of Landon, especially at the midfield. So that's, that's a smart game plan for, for Coach Lester and his team. Well, and certainly defensively, they have to be very happy right now. Landon scoreless in this first quarter and really not any good opportunities. One shot on goal, the save by the goalkeeper, Alex Bikas. But otherwise, St. Albans doing a nice job containing this Landon team. Landon going to call a timeout here to talk things up, over. Up, Obviously, Coach Bordley not liking what he's seeing on offense. Well, and I think I think the St. Albans is mixing up how they're, how they're guarding the midfielders. And uh, he, he countered, Coach Bordley countered by bringing Peter out of the substitution box and playing midfield, which, which is dangerous. With this break in the action, we'll have a quick word from our sponsor. Sport Hot is just a very excellent dealership. The selection is really great. Uh, the prices are good. They treat you like family. I'm Sheba, I'm from Baltimore, and I am a sport fan. Sport Honda, be a sport fan too. Hey guys, I had the opportunity to speak with St. Albans head coach Malcolm Lester before the game. All of his attack are sophomores, all of his starting attack are sophomores, as I heard Cab mention earlier. And he said that that youth, it has been a great thing for them so far. They're not as much, they're not able to focus as much on the hype that's surrounding this Landon, te Landon team. And instead, they're able to just go out there and play. Hopefully that relaxation will be a benefit to them as they play such a strong team. Back to you. Thanks, Leo. We have already talked a little bit about that sophomore class. They are very dynamic for St. Albans. The future very bright, featuring players such as Cormac Dugan and, of course, Bo Bai. Yeah, they have three starters starting, three sophomores starting on attack, and Bobby Beers rounds it out. Plus, they have James McJunkin, the long stick midfielder, at, uh, at, is a sophomore as well. And there's others. Matt Sneezik, number 30. He gets significant minutes. So uh, Malcolm's done a great job. And if you want to purchase a copy of this game or any of the games in the Metro Lack series, go to www.synthesismp.com. We have had some great ones on the year so far. We've already talked about that Georgetown Prep Landon game. And of course, next week, we are going to have another huge game once again featuring Landon. They're going to be playing Gonzaga. That's going to be a huge game. A lot of people looking forward to that. Both teams having great seasons so far. But of course, Landon has some business to take care of today before they can start thinking about future games. Yeah, I'm going to be curious how, how uh, both teams come out of a timeout here and what the matchups are. Looks like they Cam, Cam Yard, number 37, is going to be guarding Peter Laco at the midfield. So that St. Albans is going to keep short sticks on the Landon attack and try to focus and shut down the, the Landon midfield, which is, again, I think that's a smart strategy. That's their strength for Landon. And once Forced again, turnover. Yeah. some miscommunication, and Landon's going to turn the ball over. Second big turnover for Landon. Last time uh, St. Albans beat these guys was in 2007 when St. Albans won the IC championship. But uh, before that, I, think, I, I believe going back in all time, uh, Landon's won every game but one, only losing in 1988 to St. Albans before then. So it would certainly be a big win today for St. Albans. And right now, as you said, things going the way of the Bulldogs in terms of tempo. This is what they're trying to do, the pace that they want in this contest, and really, only allowing one shot on goal so far by the Bears is a great effort in the first quarter by St. Albans. And now, once again, the Bulldogs being patient, working the ball around. Yeah, they're getting the first midfield line back out there. 
and they'll spin it around again. Matt Sneezek will come right back onto the field for St. Albans. Plenty of time remaining in this first quarter. Again, we are scoreless and not a lot of offense so far in this contest. I think St. Albans would be happy to win one nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Still a, goes down a as a against, W. If you get a win against the Landon Bears, you'll take it however you can get it. Well, get, absolutely. They need, to, they need to convert on their shots, though. They need to get quality shots. This could be a goal here. A bit of a deflection, but St. Albans will hang on to possession. This is number four, Cormac Dugan, that we've been talking about. Cormac is the cousin of Jesse Hubbard, who is one of the uh, best lacrosse players of all time and uh, one of the more famous alumni here uh, compared to jo he and Jonathan Ogden, two of the more famous athlete athletic alums from St. Albans. And Cormac Dugan comes from a long lineage of uh, great lacrosse players in his family. Certainly carrying on the pride and tradition, already having such a great season. 26 goals, 12 assists on the year so far. They're, they're content to they're... hold for one here. There's 50 seconds to go. They're just going to hold. Landon's not pressuring. You know, why not just hold for one shot? Run, run a play here, try to get a quick, quick goal, grab momentum and go in the second. Under a minute remaining in this first quarter. Again, we are scoreless. St. Albans with possession. This may, seem like it's pretty, this may seem like it's pretty boring. Sorry, Monica, but <laughs> it's actually really smart. And if Landon's not going to press out and, and try to take the ball away. It's like basketball. And are, are you surprised by the strategy of Landon to tr not pressure more and try to force kind a turnover? Of. I mean, I, you know, I don't, I don't think that they'll be doing this in the second, third, or fourth quarter. I mean, I think it's early, so they don't want to, oh, after all a that, they're going to. Costly error by St. Albans. <coughs> they will turn the ball over unforced. That was number 30, Matt Sneezek. And so 11 seconds remaining in this first quarter. Landon has time for one crack at the goal at least. Quickly pushing the ball down the field are the Bears. A look inside. That will end the first quarter. Again, we are scoreless. St. Albans zero, Landon zero. That was Marshall Peters. Uh, they're, they're their best athlete, so to speak, uh, clearing the ball. He probably should have just taken that shot, just given something. They, I think both teams have one shot on goal, Monica. This is as slow as you can play at high school varsity level. And so with this break between the first quarter and the second quarter, do you think Rob Bordley is going to try to make some adjustments to, to try to change the tempo a little bit? Or, or what do you expect he's talking with his Bears about right now? Well, that's one of the many reasons why Rob Bordley is one of the greatest coaches of all time, his adjustments in game. You never know uh, what he's going to do, but he always finds ways. We, we saw that as evidence at mm -hmm. halftime at the prep game when he turned around and made adjustments and the team was completely different in the second half. He may come out in pressure. Uh, he may go to a different midfield line. He, he's already started mixing up the attack in the middy, so he's, he's trying to, a bunch of things right now, and we'll see what happens. And before the second quarter gets underway, let's check back in with Leo Reich. Coach Lester was preaching to his team the importance of face-offs. He said they are crucial to win because in this IAC conference, when you give up possessions, you are giving an, op an opportunity up to, some to another team to score. And in this conference, that's what they're going to do. They're going to make plays. Even though the score is still 0-0, we'll have to see how true that, that is here in the second quarter. Back to you. Thanks, Leah. So, Coach, the coach is talking a little bit about face-offs. Of course, only one face-off in that first quarter since no scoring happened in the first quarter. But getting ready for our second face-off of the day, we've talked a little bit about Sam Lamson and yeah, James Sam, McJunkin. Sam did really well uh, in the prep in St. Stephen's games. He's been facing off well as of late. And conversely, McJunkin has become the uh, James, that is. There's two. There's, there's brothers, McJunkin. A lot of brothers on the St. Albans unit but James is the face-off specialist with the long pole he's been doing very well of late so it could be a battle preparing for our second face-off of the day Landon won the first one the only one that we had in the first quarter Sam is actually getting that pretty clean he, he's clamping that ball and um, he's won both clamps and both face-offs to, to start off this game the Bears coming up with it now we'll look to clear and we'll see what adjustments Rob Bordley has made, talking a little bit in that break about that is his signature style. And, of course, he certainly has the personnel on his team that can make those in-game adjustments. But right now, it's Bears... hard for a goalie in a game like this to get rhythm. You know, low scoring, goalies usually get rhythm if there's a high shot. 
uh, density, but this, this game, one shot in each quarter, both goalies are going to be uh, uh, challenged yeah. to yeah. find rhythm and to, to, and to play it at, yeah. their, at their total yeah. ability. And as we said, the starting goalkeeper for Landon, Alex Joyce bound for Georgetown, the starting goalkeeper for St. Albans, Alex Vikas, even though, Cab, you alluded to the fact that the goalkeepers for the Bulldogs have been switching off this year. A nice luxury to have two capable goalkeepers. Yeah, they're both outstanding goalies and both seniors, which is also a benefit. Timeout call here from Malcolm Blaster. That's a possession. Timeout, as we say, it's important they get a good offensive set here after a tough, tough clear. So St. Albans with the timeout, looking to get something going on offense. We've seen them be very patient, very deliberate. And Cab, let's go ahead and talk a little bit about your top 10. See who has made it into the top 10 this week. I know there's been some changes. And so who do you have on top? Well, this is through yesterday. Gonzaga is remaining on top. They had a nice, uh, they had, they've had some more nice wins. They've beaten Prep, Riken, Boys Latin, St. Mary's, Bullis. They continue to beat teams. They beat good counsel yesterday. They're 13 and one, and 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 no question receiving every first place vote. I still have Landon uh, with their wins over St. Stephen's and Prep at number two. Uh, Prep is number three, and uh, Bullis you see there number four. Those two teams are playing right now as we speak. That is going to be an amazing game. I don't know who's going to win, but the. the uh, Bullis wins that game. They're in first place, uh, undefeated in the league. If Prep, if Prep wins, then we have a three, three or four-way tie. I can't even keep track with all the <laughs> great teams in the IEC. But then you see St. Stephen's there at, at number five, who had a tough game yesterday with Woodbury. He's had a couple injuries to some key players. We'll see if they get it back together. Calverton this season is pretty much over. They, they have one more game in the season, and uh, uh, their league, they've just been dominating. They're not going to uh, have any more tough games. St. Mary's Riken is playing well. They're at seven. Episcopal had a great win last week over Woodbury Forest. We did that game. Um, they play St. Stephen's in two days. That's going to be it. They're, those guys are heated, heated rivals, so that's going to be exciting. Paul the Sixth at nine, and Chantilly is the new team. <laughs> I've, I've bumped them up based on their quality wins recently over to number 10, uh, dropping Lan uh, Langley out of the top, top notch there. Saw that Chantilly team play last night. They certainly are impressive. Lots of offensive weapons on that team. And I was very impressed with their young goalkeeper. We've been talking a lot about goalkeepers in this game. Patrick Meehan had a great game last night against Westfield. So always helpful when you have a good young goalkeeper as well because he's going to be around for a while. But meanwhile, St. Albans, after their timeout, trying to get something going on offense. Again, their starters out on the field, being very patient, trying to work around this defense. And our live coverage today is brought to you by Sport Automotive Chevrolet and Honda. Be a sport fan too, visit sportautomotive.com. See Alex Povich uh, guarding the ball here. Alex has been settled in nicely, a close defense. Um, nice the interception. Season. Yeah, by Alex. He started. He's he's been playing great at close, and has um, been moved down there from long stick midfield where he started the season. And this game continuing with the trend of not being able to get anything going on Let's offense. Go, you see Marshall Peters doing the instant clear there, number 29 for for Landon. Very impressive how quickly the Bears can move the ball down the field and set up their offense. And now Landon just looking for their. The second real shot of the day, of course, they tried to get something going right at the end of the first quarter. They've been very quiet on offense, but again, credit to St. Albans team for getting the tempo that they want in the early goings. That shot by number 11, Charlie Schneider. I think that hit somebody on the back, back pipe. I'm not sure if that was saved. And another St. mental Albans error. To, yeah, St. Albans has to clear the ball if they want to win this game. They can't turn the ball over on simple throws like that in transition. It's got to be got to be picked up. So a number of costly turnovers in this contest for St. Albans, which limits their possessions. And right now, Landon looking for their third real shot of the day. Their shot on the last possession by Charlie Schneider headed for Ohio State. 
Yep, first midfield line's back out for Landon. And you have to imagine they're not going to continue to be this quiet for long. Hank Brown up top, so dynamic, was one of the players of the game in that Georgetown prep contest. He was absolutely amazing, particularly in the fourth quarter. Yeah, he carried the team that day. And you, you, Landon will lean on this first midfield unit here. Nice catch by Brown up top, and he will reset. Ball loose, Landon trying to hang on to it. Number 20, Rob Dunnigan coming up with it for the Bears. Dunnigan trying to make something happen. Nice look inside shot by number nine, Matt Padalicchio. That's a great save. The goalkeeper, Alex Vikas, with the save for St. Albans. That was a nice uh, dodge and dump and even better, more impressive save down low by, by Alex. Dunnigan doing a great job setting up that play for Landon. Landon still with possession. Seven minutes, 54 seconds remaining in this first half. Dunnigan looking in, finding number nine, Matt Podolicchio once again. Landon keeps dodging down the right alley here. Uh, the alley is um, the area on the sides of the goal where it's common to dodge and create. You can dodge and roll back and feed. You can dodge and push the ball in the air through X, like you see there. They just dodge down the left alley and bang it back to the back side. They're going to get a great goal. ball movement. Dunnigan with the shot again. Dunnigan has been very active today on offense so far for Landon. The Bears will hang on to possession. Brown with the shot. All these shots are a little wide, a little off. Nothing, nothing, those last two shots were not saved. They were just misses. And so Landon not really getting a lot of looks that they've wanted, it seems, in this second quarter. That shot by Podolicchio, one of the best that they've had. And now St. Albans will take another timeout here in this second quarter. Just trying to keep this game slow and maximize all the timeouts. So. Uh, maybe rest their defense on that. They've been on defense now for about two, two and a half minutes. They may be tired. Get a little rest here and get your best six defenders out there plus the goalie. And with this break, we'll have another message from our sponsor. If you need a new car, you absolutely have to come to Sport. They made me feel like I was part of their Sport family. They have the biggest selection, great prices, and everybody's nice. I'm Annalisa from Hyattsville, and I'm a Sport fan. Sport Chevrolet, be a Sport fan too. And we've talked a lot about the head coach so far for St. Albans, Malcolm Lester. He's been with this program for so long, but Cab, I understand that this will be his last year coaching this St. Albans club. Yeah, he's been here since 1992. His all-time record is 227 and 138. That's over 60% winning percentage. Uh, he has accepted a position of, as head of school at the Grace Episcopal Day School in Kensington, uh, which was an opportunity he said he he could not refuse. He's going to have the opportunity, as he as he said, to affect more lives on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, and, and the lacrosse industry, it's going to be tough to lose such a quality coach. Uh, he's had an impact in this area at all levels, youth through high school, and is one of the most successful coaches as well. Uh, he and I were talking, and one of the things I noticed was the, the, the multitude of St. Albans lacrosse traditions. His favorite is the family lacrosse day, but they have a lot of fun, fun ones like the the, the Ben's Chili Bowl Invitational and and uh, and a lot which you can uh, see on their on their St. Albans Across website. But the Family Across Day is mean, most meaningful to him because he regards St. Albans Across as an extended part of his family and treats it as such. And of course, it's going to be a huge loss for St. Albans, but the mark that he has left on this program, I think, will just continue on and continue to impact this program for years and years and years to come. Yeah, his assistant coach, Robbie Walsh, has uh, been offered the head coach and will continue the tradition well. He's been with them for a while uh, and is, uh, was a, a, a great player himself at Lehigh and attended Gonzaga, so he'll do a fine job. Six minutes, 40 seconds remaining in this first half. We are still scoreless as Dunnigan tries to get something going for Landon. Again, St. Albans doing a nice job. Looks like the same offense. They're going down the alley, kicking it through X, and St. Albans is doing a great job of sliding and recovering. 
and getting the pace that they want. Hank Brown working behind the goal, trying to get past his defender. Brown is so dynamic, defended by McJunkin. Nice look inside by Valencia. The shot, the score by number nine, Matt Podolicchio, 14th goal of the year. I think, uh, was that Alex, Alex Valencia on the assist? On the assist, I think it was. Taylor. I mean, Taylor. Taylor Valencia. Valencia with the assist. A beautiful goal by Landon. Yeah, there's a nice dodge and feed into a lefty. Polikio is a, is a natural lefty, so uh, he got it on cage, put it off hip. Finally, we have a goal here. <laughs> Six minutes ago, we have a quarter and a half of a cross for before our first goal. It's been a long time since I've seen that. It has been a very quiet day in terms of scoring so far in this IEC matchup between Le Landon and St. Albans. The Bears draw blood first, and once again, you see how active Sam Lampson is in the faceoff circle, but the loose ball going to St. Albans quickly. The Bulldogs pushing the ball up the field. Number 30, Matt Snezek. St. Albans got the faceoff win, even though Sam controlled that. They just couldn't pick it up. I thought um, both teams left the box a little early before possession on that, but the rest must have just let it roll. And so St. Albans looking to tie things up after the goal by Matt Podolicchio. St. Albans continuing to be patient. So, and conversely, the Landon defense is, just, is happy just to let them pass it around. They're not going out, even though they have great athletes on defense. Like, like Strabo and uh, and Garrett, they are not pressing out with those. And of those course, big boys. what we've seen out of St. Albans, though, they have to protect the ball. They've had some turnovers, some of them unforced, which have limited their possessions. And so, while they do want to run a patient offense here, they have to be very careful. We both are running similar offenses, and they're dodging down the alley, going through X. Cormac got, got, might have gotten away with a little bit of force there. That took a nice bounce back up to uh, Mike. Nice ball movement by the Bulldogs, I trying think, to make something happen. I mean, Ke Kevin Doherty here with the ball, just gave it up, is, is the most explosive dodger. He is being guarded by Rhodes, who's headed to Virginia, so it's not exactly an easy matchup, but, but Kevin's got to get involved in the offense and maybe use a pick. Uh, to, to free up or just use his speed. He does have explosive speed to, to get involved in the offense. He can't hide all game. Right now the Bulldogs trying to make a move here, make something happen. Doherty up top. Hands off to Balaban. Balaban working through defenders. Nothing open. Once again, Landa doing a nice job cutting off any angle at the goal. That shot by number 15, Kevin Doherty easily saved by Alex Joyce. Yeah, I think he got poke checked on his hands. It wasn't much on that shot, but at least he's trying to get involved. Landon almost turns it over, but able to hang on to possession and trying to build on their one goal lead, courtesy of Matt Podolicchio. And now that Landon scored one goal, you have to figure they're gonna continue to try to pepper the goalkeeper, Alex Vikas. Yeah, Matt Podolicchio is a nice story. He, he's a great hockey player and really didn't focus on lacrosse until uh, this past summer when uh, he finally earned a starting position. Hockey had been his primary focus, and he's right now not going to play, or uncommitted, I should say, for uh, college lacrosse. Uh, but he could definitely play at the next level if he chooses. And it will be St. Albans possession again since 1997. Madlax is lacrosse for D.C., Maryland, and Virginia families. Check out madlax.com to learn about summer tryouts for Madlax Capital All-Stars and for summer lacrosse camps for boys and girls ages 7 through 18. Receive a 15% discount in our retail superstore in McLean, Virginia when you mention Metrolax series or use the madlax.com discount code Metrolax for all your lacrosse needs like the nationally popular Mad Gear shorts. And as we say at Madlax, play with passion. Not any surprise here, St. Albans has got the same six guys on offense. 
Two minutes, 28 seconds remaining in this first half. At the end of the first quarter, we saw St. Albans try to possess the ball. There was not a lot of pressure by Landon, and perhaps St. Albans is going to do the exact same thing here, trying to work some time off this clock and get a good possession. They just well, haven't really had any good looks so far at Alex Joyce. No, they're not changing the offense. They're happy to stay in what they call their Carolina offense here with two behind, one on the crease, one attacker on the crease, and three minis up top. Um, you know, if they want to get more dynamic, they might start dodging from the attack or maybe going to their invert offense. I know they have in, in their repertoire as well. Can't have ridiculous turnovers like that. And we have seen that now time and time again out of this St. Albans team. The turnovers, we saw that at the end of the first quarter where they had possession, were trying to possess the ball, turn the ball over with about 11 seconds remaining in the first quarter. And so right now St. Albans hurting themselves on offense because not getting a lot of cracks at the goal because of the, these unforced errors that we've seen. Pressure coming on the ride. As Alex Joyce looking ahead and Landon going to return the favor with a turnover of their own. You gotta tuck it and run there. You're getting beaten on. Nice, nice ride by St. Albans. First turnover they forced today. They might think about getting a quick one here. It's not That's a bad shot. That shot by Bo Bai. St. Albans will hang on to possession. One minute, 12 seconds remaining in this first half. Landon called timeout there because they didn't have the right personnel on defense. That was Bo Bai who shot that. He's a natural lefty. Uh, he's the son of Senator Bai, and, and he's got an enormous shot left-handed. It was nice to see him get a right-handed shot off there. If he had rolled back to his left, he probably would have scored. I think he thought it was a little more congested than it was. But he's a nice finisher. He's got a lot of goals on the season. He's... Uh, He's got up to uh, 19 goals, I believe. No, 23 goals so far this season. So he's having a heck, heck of a year, and he's only a sophomore. And, Cab, right before he took that shot, you were calling for, for that, saying that this would be a good opportunity for them to take a crack at the goal, even though there was about a minute 12 remaining. So explain the, the rationale there as opposed to what they've been doing the rest of the game. Well, I, I just noticed quickly that Landon had the, the no defensive midfielders on the field. so. Uh, as a coach, when you see offensive middies playing defense, you want to try to keep them on the field and get and attack them, uh, which they did. But to save his uh, defense, Coach Bordley used a timeout as soon as he could there, which is smart coaching. Now he's going to put his best six defenders back on the field and make it hard on St. Albans again. And so St. Albans, of course, as we've talked so much about the turnovers, really hurting them on offense with this slowed down tempo and working the ball around. They've just had a lot of unforced errors. Yeah, and, and I think they're gonna, you're going to see them hold the ball. It's 112. They'll hold it for 60 seconds before they start their play. Uh, I hope they, I hope they have a play. I'm, I don't want them to. I, I know they have the Carolina offense, but I hear the coach yelling something. But we'll see if they uh, get a play in to try to make it a little bit harder on, on Landon. And as we said, lots of good offensive options for Landon. The sophomore class so impressive. I heard the offensive coordinator here for. St. Albans yell, let's run Carolina offense until 20, until 25 seconds left. So you can expect them to just bang it around. If Landon's not going to press out, then they'll get away with that. And of course, Landon. See if I can pick up the play call here from the coach. He's fortunately only about 20 yards from where, where we sit here. I'll let you know if I. In the first quarter, Landon content not to pressure very much and to let St. Albans just possess the ball and let time tick off the clock. And it looks like Landon willing to do about the same here. Now 40 seconds on the game clock for the first half. St. Albans looking to have just one more play, one last shot before the end of this first half. Again, our score Landon 1, St. Albans 0, courtesy of the goal by Matt Podolicchio. All right, they're going to initiate now. Here they go. So under 20 seconds now on the game clock. St. Albans looking to make something happen at this point. We're just going to continue with the same offense. Dodge a short stick and go. He's not drawing a slide. you got to dodge hard enough to draw a slide. Or not going to beat anybody. Nice defense by the Bears as Mark Strabo comes up with the ball. And that will end our first half. Again, your score landed one, St. Albans zero.
Landon doing a great job defensively on that play to break things up and once again not give St. Albans a good look at the goal and, and that's really the story of the first half. Neither team had a lot of shots on goal but Landon able to convert with the one by Podolikio. It was a nice shot by, by uh, Matt. They have probably about six or seven shots but only two saves for each goalie so far as so you can see not many shots are on Cage. St. Albans has not generated probably but about four shots the entire game. Um, and they're not changing up their offense. They need to be more dynamic. Now, I know they don't want to turn the ball over, and they don't want to force it, and they want to be uh, patient on offense, but if they're going to attack and initiate with the short six, they got to beat him at least, or else it's just going to be never-ending, uh, and, there's, and there's, uh, not going to be, they're not going to be able to make anything happen. And then, of course, for, for St. Albans, we've talked a lot about this is the pace, this is the tempo they want, this is the game that they want, and probably they're very happy right now, despite the fact that they're down 1-0. to zero. The fact that they held Landon to just one first-half goal is a huge victory for St. Albans. So do you expect that they're going to change things up a bit, perhaps see a different offense, or they're going to stick with that Carolina offense? Well, I think that they're going to keep it slow and deliver an offense, but if they want to score, I'm, I'm, saying, I'm not saying they should rush it or push it or anything crazy like that for... That's not what they want to do because they'll lose if they do that. I'm saying they need to they need to start creating and beating guys one on one, especially the short six on short six. If they can't do that, we don't know how they're going to score unless they run set plays with picks off ball or on ball. And I haven't seen them do that once. I'd like to see them try that. Maybe try an invert where they can isolate short six. Uh, you can see the coaches there putting their heads together, trying to figure out how they're going to score goals because. You know, now, now, now Landon's content to win one nothing. <laughs> <laughs> well, absolutely. And, of course, we, we haven't seen that much out of our two goalkeepers today because, as you said, there haven't been that many shots on goal. But certainly St. Albans going to have to get some shots on goal and find a way to beat Alex Joyce, who really is a phenomenal goalkeeper. And, as you said, he's really stepped up in the big game situations. But, of course, Right now, the IAC is such a difficult conference to play, and every game is a big game in the IAC because you're playing for that tournament seating. No question. This year, uh, everything for the IAC title is going to be coming from the playoffs. It has the reg in the past, the regular season was worth 50%, and the, uh, uh, the playoffs were worth 50%. This year, it's all about the regular season is all about seeding, so everyone wants that one or two seed because you get a bye. There's six teams in the league, and uh, if Landon wins this game and uh, next week against Episcopal, they're going to get at least the two seed, uh, depending on what happens with Bullis and uh, Georgetown Prep and St. Stephen's, for that matter, over the next week. There's a lot of IC games still left in the regular season. And, of course, Landon very hungry. Georgetown Prep has gotten the best of them for the past couple years, for the past three years in that IAC tournament. So Landon very hungry, looking to, to change that this year. They've already defeated Georgetown Prep once, as we discussed. But, again, lots more lacrosse to be played before we get to that juncture of the season. Yeah, Landon, Landon is, like I said, they're clicking. They're playing as, as well as they've played all season. Now it's hard to tell in this game because of the tempo. But uh, they're, 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 everyone, both teams are playing at a high level, and uh, you know there's there's still uh, the opportunity for anyone to win the IC, even even St. Albans or or uh, Episcopal. Uh, anyone can do it because of that new format. And if St. Albans plays this well or this smart, they can they can win it. And again, let's go ahead and have another word from our sponsor. Sport Hot is just a very excellent dealership. The selection is really great. Uh, the prices are good. They treat you like family. I'm Sheba. I'm from Baltimore, and I am a sport fan. Sport Honda. Be a sport fan, too. So again, a low scoring affair so far in this contest, but exactly what St. Albans wanted for Landon. They do have the lead right now, so certainly what they want as well. And so, Cab, we've already talked about your top 10. Let's go ahead and take a look at the teams that are looking to break into that top 10, teams number 11 through 20. Sure. We have uh, Langley, who has been at 10 all season, just knocked out last night after Chantilly's quality win at 11. St. Albans, this team here, I have at 12. South County is at 13. Uh, South County is 8-1, and one, having the best season in school history. They've beaten Westfield and Woodson, and they're playing great. Uh, 14, DeMatha. They just beat Paul the Sixth last last night. That's why I, I dropped Paul the Sixth a little bit and moved DeMatha up. Uh, Paul the Sixth is now nine. Potomac School, they just beat uh, Flint Hill yes, the other day and St. John's last week, having a solid season uh, and top team in the MAC. 
Battlefield is eight and one, good council, although they're four and seven, uh, are still a quality WCAC team. The best team in Montgomery County uh, for now is Churchill. They play Wooten today, so if they, it could be Wooten tomorrow. It could be Churchill tomorrow. So we'll see a Wednesday game in a, in a couple hours. Kettle Run is the, is the uh, surprise of the year. Uh, still undefeated, the only undefeated team in the top 20. And number 20 is Westfield, who, who beat Robinson, uh, lost a close one to uh, Chantilly last night. And again, if you want to purchase a copy of this production or any of the games in the Metro Lax series, go to www.synthesismp.com. And again, we've had so many great ones on the year so far, and you're certainly going to want to tune in next week for the Landon Gonzaga game, which is one of the biggest games of the year. And certainly there are going to be a lot of fans turning out for that contest. And while it's not a, a conference game for, for these two teams, certainly one that these two teams get ready to play for each year. Now, this is going to be the, the, the biggest game of the spring, no question. Gonzaga is number one. I have Landon at number two. And if both teams win their games between now and then, everyone's going to have them as one and two in the area. It's at Landon during their Azalea Festival, the festival which for, for those of you who don't know, brings about 5,000 people to campus. So it's gonna be a mob scene, combined <laughs> with the fact that Gonzaga's probably gonna bring their entire student body. Landon's gonna bring their entire student body. So it's gonna be wild and emotional. Uh, and we can't wait to do that one. That's gonna be an exciting game. I, that, that team, the winner of that game, will probably end up being number one in the area and probably number at least top 10 in the country. And so again, definitely tune in for that. But right now, before this second half gets underway, Cab, let's revisit the keys for the game that you had for both of these two teams. You talked a lot about pace and things like that, which we talked about. But so go ahead and evaluate each team in terms of your keys. Well, so far, St. Albans is controlling tempo. If, if Landon would had their way, it would be like six or seven uh, goals for them. So they, St. Albans is, is uh, they want to play patient. They're, they've definitely accomplished that. Landon conversely wanted to use their depth. They haven't needed to use their depth. You can play three midfielders in this game and get away with it, and they're not even going to be tired. Uh, so you can play one midfield line like St. Albans has, and it's to no disadvantage in a slow game like this. Uh, so the face-offs have been won so far by uh, Sam Lamson and Landon. For, he's won all three clamps. He's won two out of three face-offs. And so that's going to be interesting as we get down to the end. We're going to have more goals. There's no, no question we're going to have more goals. Uh, either, uh, either side, who knows. But um, face-offs will be key in a close game like this. And, of course, last time we checked in with Leah, she did talk about those face-offs. Leah, what update do you have for us from the sidelines? Hey guys, from what I've been hearing on the sideline, I don't think either of these teams spent their halftime talking about defensive play. Instead, at the St. Albans, the State Albans team on the sideline has really been talking about executing their plays, slowing it down, working on teamwork, and getting more shots off. And honestly, for both teams, that's going to be really important here in the second half, simply getting the opportunity to get shots into the goal. Back to you. Well, absolutely. A couple of things that we've been talking about and Leah confirming the team's also talking about that, particularly St. Albans, about valuing their possessions and getting good shots on goal, trying to test Alex Joyce because obviously they can't get back into this contest if they don't get good shots. No, and they need to, they need to figure out how they're going to get those shots. I alluded to the fact they need to beat somebody one-on-one -on -one and it's, it's easier said than done, but the <laughs> short six have to be uh, beaten. You have to draw a slide to initiate offense. Landon's doing so. It's just that St. Albans is playing nice recovery defense. St. Albans hasn't been able to beat anybody yet. And, and you're, so you're going to have to run set pieces or picks inside to get goals, and that's a lot harder to do. They don't have Jesse Hubbard or, or any high scoring alumni to bail them out. So uh, it's going to be a challenge here for St. Albans. And so again, this game, one of the games in the Metro Lack series, we've had a number of good games this year from area teams, a lot of them in your top 10, your top 20. We've already talked about, of course, we had Gonzaga and Bullis to start off the year. That was a big win for Gonzaga. We featured Georgetown Prep a couple of times, this Landon team a couple of times. And as we said, we will see them again next week, this past weekend. Georgetown Prep squared off against Langley. So some of the best teams from around this area we featured squaring off and as as you said this this game next week really going to be one of the highlights and pinnacles of the season as a lot of people i know are going to be interested to watch that game particularly if both of these two teams 
are undefeated from this point until that game on May 4th at Landon. Yeah, but this game, I mean, for a lacrosse purist, is a great game because it's close. It's a one-goal game. Lacrosse purists just want to see great lacrosse and a close game. They don't need it to be 19 to 18 to be exciting or 19 to 5. So let's just keep up a great high level of lacrosse here. Uh, you see a different. You see another win there by Landon. Sam Lamson doing a great job once again for the Landon Bears. That was actually Jason Murphy on the faceoff number 14. He, the the junior I haven't seen him face off uh, in a long time, but they just put him in there and he won it. And as you said, Landon has owned that statistical category in this contest, really doing a great job winning possession. There's a lot of pride from both uh, alumni groups in this game, watching, I'm sure, uh, on their computer screens right now. But to touch on a few of the, the great St. Albans programs that have played, players that have played for uh, Malcolm Lester, you have Roger Ferguson, who graduated 09, is currently st starting for Brown and one of the best players in the country. Could be an All-American up there at Lawrence Committee for not too long. Uh, Chris Landon at UVA from the same class. Jimmy Cahill is part of the Lehigh phenomenon this year. Lehigh, I think, is 11-1 in a top-10 team. Uh, Matt Miller is playing at Yale and contributing. Some of the older, more famous alumni. I said Jesse Hubbard, but you have the, the Alfred brothers, and there you see a goal from Valencia. Defenseman just lost his man on the play there. Nice Beautiful from goal. Hank Brown. Hank Brown setting up teammate Taylor Valencia. And with 11 minutes, five seconds remaining in this third quarter, Landon extends their lead oh two to zero over St. Albans and not wasting a lot of time, Cap, before getting their first goal of this second half. No, that's the second goal from the crease. So it may, may be the way to get, get inside on St. Albans, maybe the answer. So Valencia now with a goal and an assist in this contest two points on the day for taylor valencia 19. murphy faced off again but and, and won the clamp but st albans won the ground ball some some of the other alumni uh, i wanted to mention were one one that uh more famous older alumni andrew mo graduated 87 he was the he scored the goal for princeton with the, the in the national championship in 91 for Princeton's first ever title. Um, Woody Moore out of Virginia from 1990. Uh, you have Will, Will Rawson who played at Middlebury and uh, Harry and Thomas Alford. And of course, Freddie Underwood played at Brown. Landon forcing the turnover, but then turning the ball right back over to St. Albans. Coaches once again switch up to get the right personnel out on the field. It looked like it was going to be a great opportunity once again for Landon to try to make something happen, but then a costly error. And so St. Albans now with another opportunity, but they will have to clear the ball. Looks like Landon has just moved Peter Laco off attack completely to, to put him at midfield since the first few minutes of the game. Landon and they haven't, got, they haven't put him back on attack. So they got Sean O'Brien out there starting on attack for Landon in the third quarter here. Nice pressure by Andrew Mitchell, the long pole. But St. Albans with possession, trying to get their first goal of the day. And so an opportunity here to see if any changes have been made from halftime. But of course, they still want to continue with the tempo that they had in the first half, Matt Sneezik. We're back into their Carolina offense with three middies up top. And this is Michael Sneezek, number three, trying to work past his defender, number 27, Jack Falk. He's initiated about a dozen times already, and he's not he's not going hard enough. He's not draw, he's not drawing a slide before he kicks it through X to uh, to Beers here. And Beers will hand right back off. And now St. Albans will work around and try to go with the left side and Matt Sneezek going behind the goal. Nice defense by Landon, not really letting St. Albans get anything going. And this was the story of the first half as well. They have the Sneezik brothers out here on the same midfield line. They are two of nine kids in that family. Wow. All great athletes. Uh, they have a, a incredible lineage of athletes. That shot was by Matt Sneezik. And also there's 11 players on the St. Albans team who have brothers who have played or, or, or do play or will play 
in the St. Albans lacrosse family. Well, you talked a little bit about that with Malcolm Lester, and it's certainly, you know, when you have siblings going through the program, it just continues to help build those traditions, and they want to carry on their family legacy in this great St. Albans program. But meanwhile, right now, Landon looking for their third goal of the day and another on first error right there by Landon. Landon hanging on to possession, however, Taylor Valencia running down the ball. Podolicchio trying to break free, nothing there. Nice pass, Sean O'Brien looking for the shot. That was a good skip pass by Matt Podolicchio over here to Sean O'Brien. He just lost his footing before he shot it. Sean's only a sophomore on attack here. Number one for, for Landon. So lots of young talent out on the field for both of these two teams. Of course, this Landon program is a program that just continues to reload. You talked a lot about some of the St. Albans alums, but certainly for Landon, yeah, every year they reload. Not quite as deep a program here, St. Albans. Uh, their admission standards are extremely high. It's one of the best schools in the country at St. Albans, so they have a hard time getting in. Nice defensive uh, stand athletes, right there. But they do well with what they have, and they have lots of multi-sport athletes. They uh, require three sports for, for uh, I believe, freshman sophomore year here. So you have a lot of boys who play three sports beyond that for all four years. So great defense by St. Albans. Looked like Landon might have another good opportunity for a goal, but instead the Bulldogs come up with the big defensive play. And once again, desperate for a shot on goal. And for all of your high school sports stories, game coverage, videos, photo galleries, and recruiting news, visit allmetsports.com. A product of the Washington Post, every school, every sport, all the time. Here they go again, initiating from the top corner. He actually beat his man there and drew a slide. That was, that's what you have to do. It was Matt Sneezek getting things going, but that shot by Kevin Doherty, the save by Alex Joyce. That was a lot better offense in that he drew a slide, and it's, it's the reason why Kevin freed up. But Kevin's got to place that ball a heck of a lot better than that. He's got a hard shot. He's, he's into the 90s with his right hand, but that stick was right. That shot was right into the goalie's stick. Valencia heading behind the goal for Landon. Again, already two points on the day for Taylor Valencia. Kevin loves to go high, overhand high to high. I'm surprised he's not doing that. Um, maybe he, maybe he's being told to, sh to shoot it low or bounce it, put it on hips or something. But he can overpower you with high to high, but not from not from 16 yards where he just shot that. He's got to get into about 12 to 14 before he can snap it high. And again, since 1997, Madlax is lacrosse for D.C., Maryland, and Virginia families. Check out madlax.com to learn about summer tryouts for Madlax Capital All-Stars and for summer lacrosse camps for boys and girls ages 7 through 18. Receive a 15% discount in our retail superstore in McLean, Virginia when you mention Metro Lax Series or use the madlax.com discount code Metro Lax for all your lacrosse needs like the nationally popular Mad Gear shorts. And as we always say at Mad Lax, play with passion. And Valencia once again trying to get something going for this Landon team. He has been effective today with the opportunities that Landon has had. He's Looking open. inside, a great shot, a great save. Podolicchio with the shot, the save by the goalkeeper, Vikas. That was the best save of the, of the game right there. That was a wide open shot from about six, five or six yards. St. Albans left the crease without a second slide. That's why he was so open in there. Brown working left side, trying to break free. Another nice play by the goalkeeper, but Hank Brown able to sneak the ball inside. Hank actually just said, I'm, gonna, I'm going to go on this. I'm going to take the hit. And sadly, St. Albans did not punish him when he scored. Part of the reason Hank is so good is because he plays so physical on offense, and he was probably expecting a hit there, but nothing, nothing came. So Albans has got to put him down and be more. They got to be meaner inside. Vikas looking to try to cut off the angle, but Hank Brown would not be denied on that last play. So with four minutes, 44 seconds remaining in this third quarter, Landon three, St. Albans zero. Once again, battle for the loose ball. And Landon will come up with it. Great effort by number 19, Sam Lamson. 
should have been a foul on St. Albans for hitting a player while he was down, but no call. Lynn used the timeout there to keep possession. And so we've seen that several times today um, that Coach Bordley has called timeout to try to save possession or to try to get his correct personnel on the field. So really using the timeouts more strategically in that manner as opposed to try to change something up with his team. But Landon coming out of halftime, firing on all cylinders, getting two goals already in this third quarter, one by Taylor Valencia, the other by Hank Brown. And you said not it, Hank yeah. Brown, one of the most dynamic players I've seen all year long. Yeah, not surprising that Hank, Hank Brown's involved. He had the assist in the first goal, and then he had the goal unassisted on the second. He, he, how, how he goes, the team goes, for the most part offensively, um, and he, he, he's showing, again, why he's one of the top players in the area. And again, if you would like to purchase a copy of this game or any of the games in the Metro Lack Series, go to www.synthesismp.com. When we talked a little bit about this, but really in that Georgetown prep game, Hank Brown took over in the fourth quarter. He's just one of those players that when his team needs him to step up, he can and he can really be effective. And that just tells you what the caliber of player that he is. And even at the next level, you have to imagine he's going to have a great career at Drexel. Yeah, he's headed to Drexel and Coach Volker's fortunate to get such a competitor. Uh, I touched on this story in the um, Georgetown prep game. I, I, I had uh, Hank at some of my lacrosse camps when he was seven, eight, nine, ten years old, and he would compete for Camper of the Day Award every single day like it was the national championship, and he did win his fair, <laughs> fair share of uh, string kits and lacrosse t-shirts and baseball hats for Camper of the Day prizes. So he and is a competitor through and through. Nothing has changed. Yeah, not at all. Not at all. He, he'll, he'll put the team on his back like he did against prep or whenever necessary, probably as we go down the stretch here. And again, our live coverage today brought to you by Sport Automotive Chevrolet and Honda. Be a sport fan too, visit sportautomotive.com. Four minutes, 22 seconds remaining in this third quarter, Landon up three to zero in a low scoring affair. Both teams have not had a lot of shots on goal, but Landon, when given the opportunities, has been very effective on the backs of their senior standouts. This is the first time I've seen Phil Pena with the ball. Number seven. Jack Falk up top for Landon, trying to work through and make something happen, but an overthrow, perhaps that was a shot. because Yeah, that was a high shot. I have no idea why St. Albans didn't slide on that. That, that should have been, that they were lucky to get away with no goal on that. Peter Laco behind the goal, shot by Sean O'Brien. Whistle on the field. It will be land in possession. That last shot again by Sean O'Brien. That was a great inbounds play there by, by Landon to get that shot for O'Brien. He moved off ball and popped off the, the crease for a blast. Pena looking for a shot. St. Albans coming up with a nice play by Matt McJunkin. Nice play by the by Alex Pickus, the goalie to come help help there on the clear. Matt McJunkin was in trouble and the goalie Alex came back there and stepped back, which is a smart advanced play for the young goalies out there to help on the clear. Most goalies think they have to stay on the crease there. He got out of the crease and he was able to be that seventh guy on the uh, on the clear, which you needed an extra man. It makes it a lot easier. Talked about the fact that St. Albans blessed with those senior leaders and their goalkeepers, a lot of experience. So now, he St. Albans, plays like that. St. Albans is down three now, so we'll see if they change their offense. They can't exactly just bang it around forever. So this could, we could see something different, although this is the same offense right here. Hank Balvan working right side, going behind the goal to Cormac Dugan. So far, St. Albans very quiet, not a lot of shots on goal, but of course, this Carolina offense that they've been running. I think they should go back to Hank. He's actually, he's got 12 goals in the season and he's had a nice shot. Here's Kevin matched up with a short stick. Oh, they switch it. Landon saw that and switched it. So maybe they'll go back over here. With Hank, actually, this is, Sne this is Sneezik, Mike Sneezik. Sneezik looking behind the goal, goes to Dugan. Dugan looking nicely defended by number five, Alex Povich. 
Landon doing a nice job on defense right here, not giving St. Albans any good looks. Letting time just continue to tick off the clock. Another timeout on the field. One minute, 53 seconds remaining in this third quarter. Again, Landon three, St. Albans zero. And Cab, you just said it a couple of minutes ago. This, this offense of set that we've been seeing out of St. Albans really isn't going to get it done at this point. They're going to have to try to get some better looks at the goal to try to get back in this contest. Yeah, they're going to have to figure it out offensively uh, in that they, they're going to be a short stick and, cre and initiate to initiate, or are they going to run set plays, or maybe go to an invert. Uh, they've only beaten a short stick once, from what I can recall, this entire game, and when you do that, it opens up shots on the backside. Uh, they do a nice job of, of getting the ball around and playing through X, but nothing's popping open inside if you're not going to beat anybody one-on-one. -on -one. You have to, at some level, get an advantage and draw a slide to get the defense rotating. Uh, and down three, they're going to have to press a little more here offensively, which I know is not part, you know, what, what they want to do, but uh, they've got to. They've got to take a couple of risks here. Uh, the risk being that it could get ugly if it doesn't work. But, you know, they, they need a goal. They can't sit. they got to build some confidence offensively uh, and get some shots, run off some picks. I mean, they have some shooters. we got to get them shooting. Absolutely. That is the risk that you take against a team like Landon. We've already seen this year how quickly Landon can score goals and they have a lot of prolific goal scorers, but right now St. Albans back on their heels have not been able to get anything going on offense so far on the day, despite the fact, as we've said, they certainly have the personnel out on the field. They can put some numbers up on the scoreboard as both teams retake the field. One minute, 53 seconds remaining in this third quarter. And despite the low scoring affairs, certainly have had the feel that, that Landon has been in control for quite some time in this contest, just because St. Albans hurt so much in the early goings by the turnovers and just not getting any good looks at the goal at all. And yeah, now St. Albans is coming out in the same offense. We'll see the change here. Yeah, they got the short stick on, on Kevin, so he, he's got to get, and he should be able to draw a slide. Doherty. He's got to re-dodge that. I'd like to see him roll back and, and continue to dodge against the short stick until he draws a slide. He's got it here again. So St. Albans now needing to really help stretch out this defense by drawing double teams and dishing off two roll teammates. Back again. He just needs to roll back again there. He's not, and Marshall Peters is a great defender, but not drawing, a, not drawing a slide. And once again, St. Albans not able to get anything going on offense. Sneezek, Matt Sneezek trying to beat his defender, going behind goal. That shot looked like was off by number six, Bobby Beers. St. Albans will retain pipe. possession. That was right in the goalie stick there, yeah by Alex Joyce. So that time St. Albans getting two nice cracks at the goal. I'm not quite sure why Kevin's putting that thing down on, down in the middle there. He usually shoots high to high and finds corners, uh, which is a harder shot to pick up than right down there on the stick. Hank Brown double team still comes up with it somehow. We've talked about what a competitor he is. If you didn't believe it before now, you just saw it on that play right there by Brown. This first midfield unit is gonna start getting after uh, St. Albans, I have a feeling they're going to attack aggressively. Schneider wants, Schneider wants the ball here. Schneider switches left side, looking for his shot, cut off by the defender, Sneezek. Shot by Schneider, save by Vikas. Great save by Alex Vikas, the long clear as the third quarter ends. Once again, our score land in three, St. Albans zero once again. Landed able to shut out the Bulldogs in this third quarter. So definitely St. Albans going to have to switch some things up on offense if they want to get back in this contest. And once again, let's check in with Leah Reich. Hey guys, both teams came out of the, came out of the first half feeling and looking rejuvenated, but Landon really capitalized on that extra energy, getting lots of shots in. And at that second time out there, head coach Bord Bordley said to his team, they need to demand the ball. They need to get the ball and make smart shots. Because goalie Alex Joyce has made some pretty critical saves, but they can't really depend on it to leave it all up to him here in the fourth quarter if they want to finish out this game. Back to you. Thanks, Leah. Well, Coach Bordley certainly 
getting his team to get some offense going in the third quarter. But I know he'd like to see more of that to, to add some additional insurance in this contest. But when you have players like Taylor Valencia and Hank Brown on your roster, those certainly are guys that can get things going for a team. And now Landon certainly in the driver's seat in this contest. And Cav, you keep calling for this St. Albans team to try to draw those double teams, stretch out the defense. And so far, they just have not been able to do a good job of stretching out the defense and making this Landon team really work. You know, Landon's got a great defense. They have incredible athletes at the midfield, and they're, they're like it's easier said than done to beat those short sticks. Marshall Peters is, uh, according to the coaches, one of the uh, best athletes in the school, and he holds a short stick. So if you're trying to beat one of the best athletes in the school, it's not going to be easy. Um, and that's usually how most offenses are initiated. They may have to get after some long sticks here and see see if the uh, Landon close defense can guard the the young sophomore attack here for St. Albans. So the fourth so quarter far they have, though. almost underway in this contest between St. Albans and Landon. Two IAC foes looking for. Well, just so you know, Landon is already subbing. They have a uh, sub in here. Taylor Trumbauer there uh, is a strong fourth, fourth, uh, fifth defenseman, and he's in right now. So Coach Borden may start going deeper in the bench here. Once again, battle for the loose ball off the face-off. Landon trying to come up with it. Lots of brown jerseys in there battling. Both teams wanting possession, here. absolutely. Yes. Possession right now, extremely important for St. Albans. They need as many possessions as they can get, but it's the Bears that come up with possession. Great Jack, Jack effort. Falk. Yeah, nice ground ball by Jack Falk. That was tough. And I think certainly you get the, the sense how St. Albans is feeling right now. Every possession is going to count in this fourth period. But right now it's Landon with possession of the ball. Peter Laco up top for the Bears. Yeah, there's second midfield group on right now, Landon does. It's a strong second midfield unit though. Nice skip pass. Nice ball movement by Landon Laco working left side, switches over to the right side. Shot by number eight, Garrett Fellows. That's a huge save, actually. And now an opportunity here for St. Albans. Michael Sneezek bringing the ball down the field for the Bulldogs, trying to beat his defender. Nice look. Bobby Beers with an opportunity. He just didn't, have, didn't shoot that with any confidence. He was like, whoa, didn't expect the ball on my stick. What am I going to do with it? Didn't put any, didn't put any heat on that shot. That was a nice pass to him, though. Again, that is Again, not finish, yeah. going to get it done against this Landon defense. Matt Snezek in traffic. Nice check, knocks the ball loose, and Landon working the ball up the field. Michael Rhodes will hand off. And all the momentum right now with Landon as you see some more aggressive defense from St. Albans realizing they have got to try to force a turnover here. They desperately need possessions in this fourth period. Sam Lynch up top. And he will head off the, off the field as more personnel comes on for the Bears. And again, this one of the games in the Metro Lack series. You can watch all of the games that we have live streamed so far in the series. If you go to allmetsports.com, we had that Georgetown prep Landon game. Lots great. of the IEC games. Yeah, we've done almost every single, uh, I think we've done every single IEC team now. That was a nice pickoff pass by Alex, by the way, on that last defensive set. That's a great, great plus on defense if your goalie can pick off feeds. Michael Sizek trying to work through traffic, and now St. Albans will set up their offense. And exactly what St. Albans needed to do, they need to force turnovers. They need to be more active and more aggressive. Under nine minutes remaining in this fourth quarter. Again, our live coverage today brought to you by Sport Automotive, Chevrolet, and Honda. Be a sport fan too. Visit sportautomotive.com. Turnover in the pass through X there. He just dropped, dropped it. Joyce will start the clear for Landon. Landon looking for another IAC win on the season. As we talked about, we have had a lot of the IAC in the Metro Lax series, but certainly 
one of nice the top. Nice check by Sam, Sam Cavanaugh there, the sophomore longs the committee. Getting a nice trail check, but, and they get the ball back as well. I never heard a whistle. You're supposed to, by NCAA rule, blow the whistle immediately or as fast as possible. Uh, and you are allowed to get running, running starts within five yards, but the refs brought that back and allowed Landon to set up the ride, which is quite frustrating for Coach Lester and St. Albans staff. The goalkeeper, now it's Alex a lot harder Vegas. to clear. <laughs> nice clear. Getting things started for St. Albans, and now St. Albans with eight minutes, 10 seconds remaining, still looking for their first goal of the day. They have had a difficult time against this staunch Landon defense that has been so strong. And of course, Alex Joyce, the goalkeeper, has not been terribly tested today, but certainly very capable back in the net for the Bears. And once again, St. Albans working the ball around, finding Michael Sneezik, switching, goes back to his right hand, hands off. Doherty with the shot, the save by Joyce. That was a good save. That was actually Kevin's best shot, but a uh, nice high bouncer, a nice pick up by uh, Joyce on that, in the goal. And again, since 1997, Madlax is lacrosse for D.C., Maryland, and Virginia families. Check out madlax.com to learn about summer tryouts for Madlax Capital All-Stars and for summer lacrosse camps for boys and girls ages 7 through 18. Receive a 15% discount in our retail superstore in McLean, Virginia when you mention Metrolax series or use the madlax.com discount code Metrolax for all your lacrosse needs like the nationally popular Mad Gear shorts. And as we always say at Madlax, play with passion. St. Albans had a nice ride, picked up the ball but, and uh, had a turnover, but then turned it over just as quickly themselves to allow landing the ball right back. And of course, on that last offensive possession for the Bulldogs, we saw a much quicker shot, a good shot by the Bulldogs, exactly what they need to be doing. But right now, they have to pressure Landon and re-win possession if they want to get back into this ball game. Landon up 3-0, to zero, 6 minutes, 29 seconds remaining in this fourth quarter. Matt Podolicchio got the scoring started. Shot there by number six, Peter Laco. Another quality save. Battle for the loose ball. Great hustle by Sean O'Brien. O'Brien doing a nice job helping to preserve possession for Landon. And now Valencia working behind the goal. Ball knocked loose. Nice defense by Matt McJunkin. McJunkin's had a couple of nice defensive plays today for St. Albans. He and Marcus Kogo have been starters back there on defense with Camiar. Formidable uh, close defense for St. Albans. Done a pretty nice job. Allowing three goals to land is, is great in any any get any year. So the defense they've gotta they've gotta allow zero more to give St. Albans a chance here at all. Absolutely every possession extremely important in this game at this point, St. Albans looking for another quality possession, but it will be landing right now with number 27, Jack Falk up top. Yeah, Falk and Lynch and Fellows are on the second midfield line. And as you said, Coach Bordley going a bit deeper, switching things up, getting different personnel in, getting to see this second midfield and number 10, Sam Lynch working left side. Sam's committed to Johns Hopkins, only as a, he's only a sophomore. Fox committed to Virginia, who just scored that <laughs> as, yes, he, as he Falk. ripped it. He's already committed as a sophomore to Virginia, so you can see that second midfield line is gonna be the first midfield line next year, and maybe one of the better ones in the area. That was a high to high. And Kev, you just said it, St. Albans could not allow any more goals in this contest. And Jack Falk, that was just a beautiful shot, great individual effort, perfect placement by Jack Falk. And now with five minutes, 16 seconds remaining in this contest, Landon for St. Albans zero, a huge face off right here for St. Albans. Now St. Albans needs to uh, change their offensive game plan and start going to the rack aggressively. But of course, pretty they much anyone. need possession first. Landon coming up with the ground ball was number 12, Matt Strabo. He was the hero 
against St. Stephen's. St. Agnes really did a great job of shutting down Brent Armstrong. Good hard ride there by Bo, Bo Bai to force the turnover. This is where they got to attack right now. They got to go right to the goal. Michael Sneezik up top. Even though they have their D middies on, they should go with their attack right away. Instead, St. Albans working the ball around. Not a lot of time left in this contest, and now St. Albans down by four. They have to make something happen at this juncture of the game as Matt Sneezik comes back out on the field for the Bulldogs. So their starting unit out on the field trying to make something happen as Cormac Dugan heavily defended, knocked to the ground, ball loose. Not and sure. St. Albans will call a quick timeout. Possession timeout there. It almost could have been a foul for hitting a guy on the ground, but they just probably called momentum there, an inadvertent hit. And once again, let's have another message from our sponsor. Sport Hot is just a very excellent dealership. The selection is really great. Uh, the prices are good. They treat you like family. I'm Sheba. I'm from Baltimore, and I am a sport fan. Sport Honda, be a sport fan too said both of these two teams in the IAC and Cab you've already talked about the importance of the regular season going into the IAC tournament which is going to be an absolute fun event to watch because really I think a lot of people would say the top conference in this area so many good teams we've had the chance to see them you have to imagine right now as you said Landon a favorite Georgetown prep a favorite you can never count out St. Stephen St. Agnes no. and Brent Armstrong the UNC bound player no, we had St. Stevens as number one as a few weeks ago. They're, they they could get, they did lose Isaiah Allen, their, their their midfielder for the year, I believe, with the broken leg. I, I heard that recently, so that might be uh, tough to overcome. But they they have a lot of quality players there. I mean, we have six teams in the IC, uh, and all six are in the top 12. With St. Albans coming in at, at 12, in the t in the top 20 in the area, Episcopal um, plays St. Stevens in two days. Uh, that's that's a heated rivalry. Should be a great game. I I expect Episcopal to actually play that very close and could even win because of the injuries to St. Stephen's, but, uh, and also the fact that Episcopal is playing great. They they beat Woodbury convincingly last week. St. Stephen's squeaked by Woodbury yesterday, so a common opponent gives Episcopal the advantage. Both teams retake the field. Four minutes, 12 seconds remaining in this IAC matchup between St. Albans and Landon. And right now, a lot of pressure on the shoulders of the St. Albans Bulldogs. They have to make something happen fast. Well, they, they're coming out with a uh, short stick on um, short stick invert with Hank Balaban, and they're going to dodge versus Peters inverted. And they, they didn't, they didn't draw a slide though. I mean, you can, you got to draw a slide before you get the offense rolling. Michael Sneezek left side goes behind the goal to Cormac Dugan. Dugan trying to beat Alex Povich, number five, the defender. Nice defense by Landon. And Landon doing a great job running time off this clock. A deflection by the Bears. Battle for the ground ball. Michael Sneezek trying to come up with a great hustle. That should have been a push from behind right there. These refs have uh, not blown the whistle once the entire game, Monica. It could be a, <laughs> could be a record. Literally no man ups, not even the loose ball push calls like right there. So this one really a rare contest to, to see in lacrosse, both with the score, with the slow pace, with no man up situations, no penalties in this contest, no whistles, lots of timeouts, but that's really about it in terms of stoppages of play. Dugan goes oh. back up top. St. Albans' offense has got to be frustrated at this point. They can't get anything going. Now a bit of an unsettled situation, but Valencia going to back things out, let some more time click off of this clock. Landon in control, four minutes, or sorry, two minutes, 33 seconds remaining in this contest. Landon up by four. And Valencia being patient for the Landon Bears. I think Landon has to be very happy right now. This is not the pace, not the tempo they wanted, but they certainly came up with the big plays when they needed it and certainly showing their ability to adjust and adapt. And 
play with whatever they've been given. Right. And, and they didn't uh, play poorly. And they may think that, oh, we only won four, four to whatever, or maybe they'll get a fifth year. But they've actually played very smart and within their what St. Albans has given them, and they've taken that. Uh, they weren't able to go deep and, and substitute like they uh, probably had hoped because of the way St. Albans has played this. But um, you know, this will make them better for close games later on. There's going to be close games. They're, they're, they're going to have to battle Prep or St. Stephen's or, or Bullis or, or two of them at least uh, in the playoffs in, in tight games. It's, it helps to have sort of confidence built through games like this. Well, absolutely, and of course they're loss in the IAC is to Bullis. That was a 7-6 to six game, so a one-goal loss for Landon. Many of their losses early in the season were by that small margin, so very Land important. Landon's a new team at this point. Uh, I mean, they, they lost to Bullis two, two or three weeks ago. They've turned it around since then. They've won five straight. they got to keep it in the box here, and, and Coach Bully just called a timeout to make sure they maintain possession. I would suspect that he's going to uh, sub deeply here. Well, and, and certainly that Georgetown prep game, I think, was a huge, not necessarily a turning point for them, but that was really just a signature win that I think really helped them gel and find cohesiveness. And, and since then, they really have been absolutely dynamic. Yeah, it was surprising. We called that game, Monica, and we, we actually uh, didn't think Landon had played to the level capable to beat prep, and they put it all together in that game and have been playing at that level with that confidence and that swagger since then. Um, and you can expect it to continue throughout the, throughout the spring. And again, speaking of that game, if you'd like to purchase a copy of that Georgetown Prep Landing game, this contest, or any of the games in the Metro Lack series, go to www.synthesismp.com. Pretty mellow, me mellow uh, energy level Pretty uh, for St. Albans coming out of the time out there. I think they're, they realize what's going on here. Unable to generate anything offensively. They're very, very frustrated offensively, but they are young. They only have three sophomores out there. Um, these, those three guys will learn from it and, and be one of the best attacks, if not next year, then surely in two years in the area. And not a lot of time remaining on the scoreboard. One minute, 18 seconds remaining in this IAC matchup. Landon. Landon has 10 seconds to enter the uh, sub box, and now they have to keep it in, seeing as though they're ahead. And again, there's a trip there with possession. The refs don't call it. So the refs, I think, are trying to go the whole game without making a, a call here, no matter what happens. If I was Perhaps trying St. to set Albans, a record. Yeah. You can do anything right now if you're St. Albans and you know you're not going to get a flag call. And they got the ball back. Momentarily. Uh, yeah. And then number 11, Charlie Schneider coming up with it for the Bears. Under a minute remaining in this contest. Schneider working left side, defended by McJunkin. And Landon out of the not way. able to hang on to possession. Yeah. Out of the box there, so it's automatic. Turn so with over. 39 seconds remaining in this contest, St. Albans trying to make something happen. Alex Joyce racing out of the goal. Great play by the goalkeeper, Alex Joyce. And now Taylor Valencia will work the ball down the field for Landon. It has been all Landon all day long. And Landon now content to let time expire. 16 seconds remaining. The Landon Bears, as you said, have really played a good, smart game today against this St. Albans team and will get an IAC win out of it. And that will do it. Your winners today, the Landon Bears 4, St. Albans Bulldogs 0. Landon doing a great job, that Landon defense shutting out St. Albans. Of course, St. Albans helped a bit with the turnovers, but that Landon defense, we've been so impressed with them and continuing to live up to that reputation. They're tough. Coach Leachman, Coach Shushan, they do a nice job of coaching the defense back there. Uh, they have to be proud with it, that performance. I, I wouldn't have guessed that. I, I would have, I knew, I had a feeling it was going to be a low-scoring game based on the game plan for St. Albans, and Landon's content to win a low-scoring game. But uh, four, four nothing is is exceptional defense. And of course, the offense getting it done today when it mattered. Matt Podolicchio getting things going. Taylor Valencia and Hank Brown were both dynamic as always on yeah. offense. Yeah, Those would, two young men, incredible. I would, I would think Hank Brown gets the uh, 
if we were to give a most valuable player, I'd give it to Hank. He, he had one goal, one assist. Actually, let's get, I think the whole the whole starting defense for Landon should get the MVP <laughs> to allow hardly any shots and to uh, give up zero. Let's give it to them. Absolutely, the defense today, a great game. And I know after the St. Stephen St. Agnes game, it was the defense too that was really credited a lot with that win. I talked a little bit about Mark Strabo earlier, but he really had a great game in that contest. It's just a very strong defensive unit for Landon. They have all the pieces to win that IAC tournament, but as we said, it's just tough. There are so many great teams in the IAC. You can't count anyone out, but certainly you have to expect Landon one of the favorites. Yeah, they have strong defensive leadership with, with, with uh, Sellers Garrett, uh, Strabo, who's headed to Princeton. He's a captain. You know, they have uh, move Alex Povich down there, so he's settled in nicely. They move Rhodes to Long Stick Midi, and he's playing fantastic, guarding the top midfielder of every team they play so they've got to figure it out right now they're clicking and they're ready to go I think they're ready to, they, they, they have one more IC game before uh, Gonzaga next week and we'll be doing that game a week from this Friday uh, at Landon that should be an enormous game for the uh, for both schools and the winner like I said I think will be the number one team in the area at the end of the year and the top 10 possibly even a top five team in the country uh, if they continue to go on to win their respective conference championships. Absolutely, and of course, Cab, we've seen both Gonzaga and Landon in the Metro Lac Series. What do you think, to go ahead and preview that a little bit, are going to be some of the difference makers in that contest? Well, Gonzaga's got the best defense in the area. We talk about Landon's great defense, but uh, I think uh, Gonzaga's is even better. So uh, Landon's got to figure out ways to score. They're, they're not going to uh, have success with uh, beating that close defense, so they're going to have to do it at the midfield. Uh, and Gonzaga is every bit as deep, if not deeper, at the midfield than, than Landon. Uh, that's going to be an exciting matchup in the mm -hmm. midfield, actually. Uh, the, the Gonzaga attack is very strong, and they've been putting up a lot of points, so that's going to be a challenge for this great, great uh, Landon defense. It's going to come down to face-offs. Both, both face-off guys, Eric Baumgartner for Gonzaga mm -hmm. and Sam Lampson are strong. Goalies are going to have to play well. Uh, and I think, it, I hope, it's a fast game. I mean, both teams are deep. Both teams are very athletic. You have Connor Reed in midfield, um, one of the best players in the area. Those, I would love to see him run up and down and have a, uh, you know, a 14 to 13 game after watching a slow one here. And we might get it. We could we could see a 14 13 game, uh, but I think coaches will probably uh, figure out ways defensively to stop each other and to neutralize their top players. So. Uh, we may not get that, but we will get an exciting game showing the best athletes uh, of two of the top programs in the area. And again, let's have another message from our sponsor. Sport Honda is just a very excellent dealership. The selection is really great. Uh, the prices are good. They treat you like family. I'm Sheba. I'm from Baltimore, and I am a sport fan. Sport Honda, be a sport fan too. And going back a little bit to that Gonzaga landed game that we have next week, and you talked about the faceoffs. We were so impressed with Eric Baumgartner at the first game that we had in the Metro Lax series this year, Gonzaga Bullis, and a bit surprised that Gonzaga built up that big lead and really just. I think that game really caught a lot of people's attention because of how dominating they were in that contest. Yeah, they absolutely dominated Bullis, but Bullis since then to their uh, coaches, uh, uh, they, they've. They've turned it around completely. They, after losing that game and looking pretty horrible that day, they they uh, beat Landon. They have some quality wins. They may have beaten Prep today. We'll find out here shortly. I'd love to know uh, the, the winner of that game because that's going to be the front runner in the IC as well. Uh, but Eric Baumgartner, the faceoff guy yeah. you, you uh, alluded to there, headed to Denison. He's a big, strong kid. He just powers you with his with his clamp. Um, Sam Lampson is more of a, a wrestler background who's going to. Uh, he has a good clamp as well, but he will fight you to, to and battle you on every single ground ball. It's going to be a war in the faceoffs. Both wing guys are are great, so it's it's going to be uh, it's going to be a physical game. Looks like we have Coach Boardley here with uh, the goalie Alex Joyce here in a minute. So we are trying to round up our winning coach and player of the game. Alex Joyce finished up with uh, by my unofficial count with five saves. So. Um, and Leah Reich now standing with our winning coach and Alex Joyce, our player of the game. Coach, six consecutive wins. That has to feel pretty good for you. Yeah, we feel good about where we are now. Uh, 
Uh, you know, we came down here knowing St. Albans was going to give us uh, a good game, and uh, they did. Uh, fortunately, we played real good defense. I wish we'd finished a little bit more on the offensive end, but overall, we're happy. Coming into the second half, it kind of seemed like your team's energy was up a good amount. You got some more offensive play. What do you think? Uh, Coach Horsey made a, a slight adjustment that helped us a little bit, opened up some passing lanes. We had some opportunities. Uh, we didn't finish as much as uh, we thought we might have. But, uh, yeah, I think their energy level was up a little bit. I think they came down here uh, thinking, okay, they looked at all those comparative scores and thought, all we have to do is show up, and that's not the way it works. Alex, obviously the defense was on fire the first half. The offense really stepped up in the second, but it really came down to your critical saves. Was the pressure feeling? Were you feeling the pressure? Uh, not really. I mean, my defense really did a good job uh, keeping the shots to coming from the outside. And uh, ever since halftime, our coach, our defensive coach, kept saying, "Get that shut out." So I mean, it was kind of in the back of my head, but I wouldn't say there was really any pressure. It was more confidence. Was there any pressure in the back of your mind to shut out a conference team? Uh, not really. Um, I mean, a win's a win. That, that's pretty much it. Well, congratulations, guys. Back to you. Thanks, Leah. And again, Landon getting the shutout today, winning 4-0 to zero over their IAC opponent, St. Albans. Thanks so much for joining us for this installment of the Metro Lack Series. We'll see you next time, where once again, we will have the Landon Bears. They will be squaring off against Gonzaga. It's going to be a great game. We're looking forward to it. We'll see you then.